थैंक यू सो मच रिस्पेक्टेड मैम अवर माई कलीग डॉक्टर हेमा मालनी मोहन सर कॉलिंग काउंसिलर ऑफ दिस सेशन एंड डियर स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज द फर्स्ट एम ए पी सी क्लासेस फॉर द जुलाई ट्वेंटी बैच ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू बैच As of now, as Madam has told that the, it has kept on a hold for some time the study centers, and soon starting you the study center. Panic that I have to submit the assignments and all. Uh, once assignment is uh, uh, written, kindly keep you. We will send an email to you. Our center after receive the email from the regarding this program, we will inform you when and where you have to submit. be giving ample of time to submit the assignments also but please keep it ready because if the moment it is uh, processed you have to immediately submit at the study center so don't worry about it usually the classes and all will be held at the uh, study centers not at the regional center as the centers are kept in abeyance at present due to some uh, administrative issues uh, the regional center and the uh, hema madam and other uh, counselors have to, we all have taken that initiative that all the psychology program be a psychology and mpc will have conducted through the regional center online so please uh, take uh, this opportunity attend the program and don't worry about the timely completion of your program practicals everything that will be take care but uh, cooperate you also cooperate that all what feel and uh, uh we have seen the chat boxes and many uh, you are more eager to have the whatsapp group and all but don't mislead others that many students we have seen they take initiative and give wrong information because every session every year will have different type of activity okay so don't club that uh, jan batch is different jan batch has not yet started only so don't put all these things the only july batch students will uh, you focus on your activities don't try to get what other uh, batch has done and what they are doing so this will create a lot of confusion and you will end up with confusion and will get a wrong information so we are there to guide you we are the right person hema madam is there uh, we are will always guide you how to go ahead with this okay so don't worry about it and your exams will be in the june 2023 uh, so you have lot of time now for that so uh, be attentive in class kindly take the notes or uh, it's just a redressal kind of a thing wherever you uh, have queries the counselors will be uh, taking out all the notes and can be clarify your doubts that's all wish you all the best and uh, hope uh, you will all be successfully completing your program in june 2023 the first year thank you thank you madam for giving this opportunity to interact with all thank you Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much, ma'am, for addressing the students. As madam has already, I don't take much time. Uh, as madam has already uh, given the guidelines. See, you are the students of July two thousand twenty-two batch. Okay, so we have called uh, only July two thousand twenty-two batch students, as there is no study center yet. Uh, we are conducting the sessions from regional center side, and uh, don't worry about other things. Please don't give, uh, mislead the other people. You please check RC Bangalore website or else the IGNU main website, so that all the updated information will be available. And for uh, this thing, assignment already we have told in the induction meeting. Start uh, preparing the assignment. assignments the deadlines and all don't worry about that till april 30th you can prepare the assignment keep it with you uh, don't worry about the submission once the study center is activated we will uh, tell you we will give information where to submit the assignments till then prepare the assignments keep it with you this is one thing the other thing is april may link will be open for applying for the first year examination please apply for the examination don't bother about submission of the assignment keep it ready with you by 30th april then the next thing is second year registration also link will be open in march and april please keep checking the internet and apply for the second year admission this is for your information and uh, if any uh, other queries are there you in uh, we will be uh, address you addressing you in other classes we will conduct uh, classes and uh, please cooperate with us and don't worry about any other thing don't be anxious practical we will take up later once the study center is established within this one or two months uh, practical will be conducted before the theory examination or after the examination also it is around okay don't worry about that and uh, wish you all the best now the session will be handed over to uh, dr mohana sir uh, the academic counselor for uh, uh, session me, sir can please. ask a question ma'am <laughs> 
Uh, sir, once, uh, yeah, tell me. Basically, uh, I didn't get the induction uh, done. Uh, I came uh, several times to Santi Nagar uh, system. Uh, office, they said like they will be doing it in 10 days. I came three times, but I didn't. The meeting is done for the first year, sir, for MAPC. We have sent the emails also, and many of them have attended also. Oh, we will check, sir. Anyhow, send us a mail. Why it is not received? We don't know. Check the spam also. No. Many of them attended no, last no, month. No, I responded. Can... Uh, can I get the recording, ma'am? Actually, absolutely. I'm... Yes, sir. Yes, we will send to all first year students. Don't worry, sir. Huh? Tomorrow, Monday, I will arrange that induction recording is there. I will arrange to send to all the students. Okay, thank you. Okay, sir, thank you very much. Sir, Mohana, sir. Okay, ma'am. Yes. Yeah, there will be uh, one session, two hours, one session will be there. And the same uh, course will be continued uh, tomorrow also as per the uh, okay schedule. Uh, please uh, make note of it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, dear students, uh, welcome to University, IGNO University, Indira Gandhi National Open University and uh, RC, RC Bangalore. And uh, welcome to the program. Okay. So, I am academic counselor for uh, uh, MPC005, <clears throat> okay, so which is the uh, research methods. So, under that, today we will discuss about uh, introduction to in, uh, research methods, especially in psychology, <clears throat> okay. So, research, so the study uh, code is, uh, post code is MPC005, <clears throat> okay. So, so we had email okay, notification okay. saying it is for 006. Okay, sir, make it MPC 005 only. Don't worry. Okay. Uh, I think, uh, sir, you yes. please MPC 005. It is written MPC 006 is the statistics. Uh, we will correct it. Tomorrow also, this is 5 only, na, sir. Yes, ma'am, 005. Yes, please for both the uh, papers, sir, only is delaying. So this is MPC 005 research methodology. Okay. Okay, so uh, both the papers I am handling uh, MPC 005 and MPC 006. Okay, today we'll deal uh, about uh, <clears throat> research methods, research methods in psychology. So uh, research, so you can see everywhere, all the subject, uh, especially in the science subject, the research is uh, uh, even arts also. So science, especially, they call it a very uh, empirical way. We take it up as an empirical way. Okay, so we can do a uh, mini research activities uh, after post graduation. Okay, during the post graduation also, so we can do uh, a lot of uh, you know uh, research activities, paper activities, uh, survey methods. Okay, so qualitative research, uh, quantitative research. Uh, so there are many types of uh, you know research activities has been conducted. Okay, so once you understand that. What is research? Then you can conduct your own research activities related to psychology or any other, uh, you know, aspect of the, you know, your interested area. Okay. So in psychology, <clears throat> in psychology, uh, uh, in case if you want to do any uh, empirical studies, like to, for example, if you want to assess the academic stress or anxiety, depressions, or suicidal ideations, or any interested subject. Okay, like uh, related to disorders, uh, related to mental status, well-being, physical related, cognitive related, and the psychosocial, psycho-emotional. Okay, so in case if you want to assess the person's behavior in terms of all the angles, like physical, cognitive, as well as the psychosocial element, then you can take any kind of measurable variable. Measurable variables. So before going to assess. Uh, you know, uh, introduce the subject uh, research, research method. So once you look into the, you know, definition of psychology. Okay, so psychology, actually, uh, it is a scientific study of behavior. Not only human behavior, we are studying, uh, you know, animals, uh, birds, behavior. Also. So that is why uh, research, uh, psychology is a scientific study of behavior. So here, the point is, what is behavior? Okay, so behavior in the sense, uh, it has actually, it has mainly three component behavior. So that is a physical component, cognition, cognitive component, as well as the psychosocial component. Uh, 
so physical means so what are the you know uh, for uh, action and reactions for action and reactions what are the physical you know parts or physical uh, you know component will be you know uh, respond to the stimulus by you know receiving or uh, uh, reacting to that so all the component we are called as a you know biological basis a physical component related to the behavior okay for example neurons brain brain structures whatever so what can we touch biologically so all the component comes under the biological aspect cognitive aspect second one is <clears throat> second uh, cognition means what are the aspects okay what are the process has been taking place in our brain for example memory learning decision making creative thinking critical thinking so almost all the you know aspect which is run which is take you know process in our brain so all such aspect we are called as a form okay so and then the third element third component is psychosocial element psychosocial element in the sense uh psychosocial element in the sense so which covers the person's personality emotions feelings emotional intelligence okay so we can we are uh, normally we talk about uh, how you are you know looking uh, you know in a uh, you know, style of you know, personality uh, uh like that and then emotions so you are moody a uh, work mood okay so we can see a lot of uh, you know measurable variables so which comes under the psychosocial element so as a psychologist we are studying different you know parameters or different aspect of the person's behavior especially is the characteristics biological cognitive as well as the psychosocial you know characteristics we are actually studying we are observing we are collecting the data related to that we are uh, you know being uh, uh, researching okay uh, like academic stress cognitive uh, abilities skills attitude aptitude the person's overall behavior so why we are conducting all such uh, research activities in the sense to you know uh, to enhance the person's well being so this is the major objective of the research especially in the sector okay so research has been taking place every field not only in psychology science arts commerce okay so you know uh, basic science whatever but the main objective of the research being conducted in psychology for uh, you know enhancement of overall well being of the person okay so comfort zone to become a, to you know to increase the more comfort zone for any individual any particular uh, you know field okay so so that is why uh, uh, we can uh, see a lot of variables lot of variables to study in a research way okay as i told you biological component cognitive component like memory learning learning styles okay so and then creativity different skills creativity critical thinking creative thinking okay decision making intelligence so in case if you want to see the a significant correlation between academic stress and then your performance then we can use a different tools okay so these two are variables in a research angle okay so academic stress is one of the you know research variables and then academic performance so that is also one more variable in case if you want to see the correlations or impact in between uh, independent or dependent variables then we have to play in research angle okay so that is why it is more important to learn research methodology so in case if you google it any particular topic any particular or you are interested in area so you can get n number of research you know research activities research papers uh, citations okay so you can publish uh, there are many you know papers published in the you know reputed uh, journals uh, in universities so they have submitted uh, different theses mphil theses phd theses okay dissertations so there are many uh you know research activities may be available okay once you go through that once you go through that then you can get a proper idea 
how to frame how to frame a uh, title title of your paper research activities so there are many element comes there are many element comes in the process of this okay so before going to understand what is research we should know what is the, uh, you know definition of research what is research okay so <clears throat> research in the sense a uh, investigation of new information or investigation of new knowledge or uh, scientific research is a systematic and objective attempt to provide answer to uh, different uh, uh, questions in case if you google it definition of uh, uh, psychology uh, psychological research then you can get n number of definition okay so n number of definition that you can get but the ultimately ultimately the definition of research is so whatever you can get in the you know website or in your paper or in your uh, syllabus uh, i mean uh, in your uh, you know book okay so every definitions are okay okay so you can see a kerlinger definition for uh, research so according to kerlinger a systematic controlled empirical and uh, critical investigation of hypothetical uh, propositions about the presumed relationship about various phenomena so this is uh, you know definitions of uh, research according to kerlinger at the encyclopedia also they have uh, they given some uh, you know definition for that for especially for social science the manipulation of generalizing generalizing to extend connect of verified knowledge and a systematic procedure a systematic procedure or investigation to find something new something new information or something new knowledge to any particular so this is actually the uh, proper definition for research research in psychology <clears throat> okay okay so uh the one of the most uh, uh, important definitions for research research uh, in psychology is a systematic investigation to find answer to a problem okay so you can uh, because in the process of research activities you can see a lot of procedures which we need to follow properly no need to bother about the lost options a lost uh, part of the research activities like uh, you know answers or uh, you know outcomes outcomes or major findings of the research sometime it could be expected result may be come sometimes uh, unexpected result also comes okay depending on the situation depending on the way and when you conduct it okay being conducted okay so nothing to worry about the you know output or the result part but we should know how to conduct procedure procedure for research activities so that is why the definition should be a systematic procedure or systematic investigation to find new information or to find new uh, acquire new knowledge okay so this is a proper definition for research or research activities in psychology <clears throat> okay so the term research refers to a, a systematic method consisting of enunciating the problem formulating hypothesis collecting the fact or, or data analyzing the facts and the research certain conclusions either the form of uh, solutions or towards the concerned problems or in a certain generalization for some uh, theoretical formulation so this is how we usually you know so, so for that reason we are conducting this activity okay while we are conducting uh, you know research means we have to collect the data so before collecting the data so we have to frame uh, some objectives and hypothesis for that so that is why <clears throat> any dissertations or uh, mphil or phd dissertation before going to start your research activities we have to prepare research proposals or synopsis so in that uh, synopsis we have to include all such information for example title of your paper okay so title objectives and hypothesis of uh, your research activities 
and tools that used to be used and uh, you know research methods what kind of research method that uh, you supposed to use whether it is qualitative research or quantitative research again there are many methods comes under the qualitative research activities and the qualitative research activities whether it is questionnaire based or interventions programs or whether whether it is <coughs> laboratory design what kind of research activities that you supposed to use okay so you need to add all the information before you know uh, start the any research activity and also you need to add uh, in the research proposals so like uh, you know uh, variables which is dependent variables and which is independent variable what is the significant uh, you know correlation between independent and dependent variable okay so you can put more than two independent variable so it is depending upon your area, you know interest and uh, the you know, feasibility so everything it is up to the research okay sir, so after sorry. that sir sorry to interrupt sir what do you mean by theoretical formulation mm. theoretical formulation okay uh, let, let me tell you one by one so there are a certain you know procedure that comes in the process of research activities so beginning uh, first we should know uh, 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 definition for research then uh, research process will come okay so under that research process so formulating uh, hypothesis formulating objectives and the test constructions and then choosing the proper tools so every steps that comes in the process of research activities by the moment i will explain each and every okay <clears throat> so so this is just a information about uh, you know research so how research uh, you know it should be okay uh so in a research proposal so after once you identify the you know objectives and hypotheses and uh, identification of your uh, research variables which is uh, once you choose the dependent and independent variables then accordingly you need to uh, put some uh, you know uh, questions up and after that once you choose the proper questionnaire that should have uh, validity reliability and uh, you know proper norms without norms standardized tools in case if you if you supposed to use any uh, tools without having a standardized one it is not valid for any further analysis so that is why so before going to use any uh, you know tools psychological tools you should check whether the tools is reliable one or not okay so this is also one of the important element while you are you know following in the process of research uh, proposal okay and then uh, sampling is one of the important uh, criteria study populations first you need to identify the study populations uh, related to uh, your uh, subject or uh, you know objective of the studies and then uh, according to your uh, you know variables okay so among study populations so you need to restrict it to particular geographical area like uh, uh, bangalore bangalore south bangalore north like that you can uh, you know choose okay so or your uh, you know uh, your area that you can also you can choose <clears throat> so and then one more thing is after once you identify different uh, tools uh, statistical method also you need to put statistical method whether it is a descriptive t test correlation regression analysis okay so <clears throat> uh, uh, what is that uh, parametric or non parametric so which uh, you know test that you supposed to use once you collect the data okay so each and everything you need to add in the in the in the in the process of the you know preparing research proposal okay so once you understand what is research and how to start that so by the moment every you know uh, these are the questions may be what is that how to formulate research activities how to formulate or, or, or how to find research variables that should be measurable what is exactly that point okay what is actually the variables what is that okay so which is independent which is dependent variables 
okay so that is why uh, once you go through the your book uh, mpc 005 then definitely you can understand what is the exam how to proceed step by step so in any uh, research activities there are five different uh, chapters come okay so the first chapter is introduction part so introduction part we have to introduce all the variables what is supposed to assess or uh, what we supposed to do in research way the second one is a uh, review of literature so uh, second unit so once you identify the research variables then you need to you know review such uh, you know uh, literatures related to the uh, research objectives or research you know uh, the entire papers because we need to frame that we need to justify the answer we need to justify the research procedures we need to justify the empirical and theoretical knowledge or material also we need to provide okay <clears throat> so this is about uh, unit 2 uh, and third one is research methodology research method methodology in the sense or research method in the sense how you proceed to get new knowledge to gain something new information okay so what are the procedure you need to follow to get something new so it include uh, all the you know uh, method a uh, procedural uh, method to investigate new information or new things for example objectives hypothesis title of your paper and variables so, so everything in third chapters that include uh, content many content and fourth unit is that is result analysis okay after third unit so you need to collect the data collect the data from the sample okay so again there are many sampling methods will come like a probability sampling techniques or non probability sampling techniques okay so simple random random stratified so quota sampling and then non parametric or uh, you know snowball techniques and then uh, purposive convenience okay so these are the non probability sampling what is that exactly how to choose that how to identify which is that okay once you go through that step by step then only you can understand what kind of you know this is a sampling method that i am using you can easily understand <clears throat> okay and moreover once you identify that research methods uh, sampling methods then you need to collect the data we need to follow some uh, you know ethical issues also we have to give some assurance confidentiality consent form from the you know uh, data uh, sample so everything we need to you know uh, identify in the process of research activities so before going to start okay so once you collect the data so there are many assessment tools will be available okay so uh, you can do by manually like a t test what kind of statistical method that you need to apply what kind of objectives uh, that you have framed accordingly you need to apply the statistical method in case if you want to see the significant difference between two groups okay for example in case if you want to assess the academic stress academic stress of uh, high school students or college students okay so you need to uh, assess the level level of academic stress so for that you need to uh, calculate descriptive statistics which means mean and the standard deviation and then the minimum score maximum score so once that data is uh, put into the normal probability curve so that uh, data should be in the normative okay okay so uh, then only we can uh, consider that data into the uh, calculation okay so for that we need to calculate the kurtzis and quinnis also once the data is uh, when you put the data into the normally distributed curve the quinnis and kurtzis that should be within the range of minus 2 to plus 2 so it's a uh, you know mm, some technical terms will come so in the process of your uh, dissertations or uh, research activities uh, Uh, your uh, research guide okay so they will take care of that so how the data should be so what is the uh, normal data 
so in case the data is normally distributed we can't uh, take the data for further analysis any kind of analysis okay so we need to check each and everything in the process of research procedures especially in the third unit okay so that is why research is nothing but it's a systematic procedure systematic procedure to gain something new knowledge yes sir i have a question uh, with regards to the sample size uh, so is there a minimum sample size uh, that needs to be considered for any uh, sampling yes madam yes madam there is a formula for that to you know choose or to determine the sample size so before going to you know choose a particular sample a sample size we need to assess uh you know we have to define what is our study population so study population so for example if you want to study the uh, uh academic stress or academic performance of the high school student okay high school students in bengaluru south or bengaluru north or uh, you know chennai or whatever so you need to assess how many students will be there especially at the particular age range okay from 8th 9th 10th so particular region okay one one once again uh are any particular uh, regions that you can take okay so once you identify number of your, your study population then you can choose percentage so there is a formula so i tell you later in the uh, uh you know topic when it comes the sampling and the determination of the sample size okay for example for example for 1 lakh population for 1 lakh population we have to take a uh, 375 sample okay so that will be the standardized one okay so before going to choose or determine the sample size first we should know what is our sample uh, study population got it so you can okay. google it you can get uh, students or mm -hmm. adolescent particular adolescent or age group age wise you can take or any special cases uh, in case if you google it you can get or officially we can uh, approach the different department government department or uh, private uh, ngos okay so approximate not exact okay once you identify the sample size for study population so based on that you can choose you can draw uh, some sample from that by using different methods okay, thank you so sir there is a procedure again to you know determine the sample size so that is why uh it's a research is nothing but systematic procedure so once you follow the systematic procedures definitely you can get uh, you know empirical evidence for that empirical evidence for any kind of research activities or research <clears throat> okay so that is most important thank you sir okay so okay ma'am and uh, uh okay fourth unit so that is result after the data collection we need to add uh, we need to calculate the data so we can calculate uh, by using different uh, tools there are many softwares will be available like spss is there yeah, amos is there even excel uh, we can uh, you know calculate uh, some data uh, you can calculate t t test uh, correlations and regression analysis mean so you can get uh, such values in uh, you know uh, excel sheet also okay there are many software will be there nowadays you can uh, uh, you know using uh, uh, by using any software such software so we can easily get uh, some information analysis information okay so and also we need to interpret the data so whether the data is significantly correlated or what significantly you know uh, different or what okay for example if you want to see the significant difference between gender in terms of any variables like intelligence or level of uh, academic uh, stress or in level of emotional intelligence or level of any measurable characteristics if you, if you want to see the significant difference between gender we need to add t test it gives Uh, levels also whether the data is significant or not or uh, in case if it is significant which level significant whether it is significant at 00 0.01 level or 0.05 level 
okay so there is a actually am i well yes yes sir yes sir yes sir Okay. Now it's audible. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, there is a actually uh, uh, some information we can easily get by uh, by you know calculating some data. So we can easily analysis by seeing some values according to the tables which gives that you know software that gives. Okay. So once you understand that the significant levels or uh, you know uh, difference factors. Uh, which related to your study variables then you can easily analysis your you know data so accordingly in the unit 5 we can discuss discuss with the previous research activities whether the data is supported by the existed literatures or what so what kind of uh, you know research uh, research result that you can get okay so this is how and uh, last unit in a uh, sixth unit conclusion part conclusion part you can conclude your result overall result and uh, major findings uh, limitations and then uh, you know uh, recommendation for the further studies so everything that you can put in the last unit and appendix will come and then uh, reference reference is most important so we are following uh, uh, in a or uh, entire research activities uh, uh, like uh, uh, apa form okay so american psychological association has uh, you know given some uh, you know guidelines how to write how to write a research paper dissertation a thesis whatever okay we need to follow that what is that exactly so it describes everything including the font size font uh, you know styles space everything uh, it narrated they have given some instructions okay rules and regulation how to write and how to present how to you know submit uh, the copy research activity uh, to the your uh, respective institutions a uh, department whatever so uh, research is nothing but systematic procedure okay so once you you know go through that with a research different kinds of uh, research activities then you can understand what is this okay so so that is why in case if you google it definition for research you can get n number of uh, definitions for that but simply you just understand that is a systematic processor to gain something something new knowledge or something new information that so next point a uh, criteria of good research so as i told you uh, objective main objective of the research is to enhance or uh, improve overall well-being of the person why we are conducting uh, so much of uh, so many of uh, research activity for the benefit of us for uh, you know benefit of uh, you know the person who needy okay in case if you want to study the you know uh, suicide ideations among adolescent okay by conducting the percentage and how to prevent that so we can give some suggestion to the you know policy makers okay so they will uh, take uh, such inputs and how to control it how to regulate it okay so ultimately ultimately the main objective of the research is to enhance or to improve person's well being okay so the criteria of good research okay so uh, the criteria for good research uh, maybe the purpose of the research should be clearly defined and common concept that a uh, use should be uh, operationally defined so we uh, that uh, research should have some operational definition okay so and then theoretical definitions also the particular research should have okay so once that comes in the uh, process of research method i tell you what is the uh, what is the significant difference between a uh, operational definition and theoretical definition okay so and then uh, criteria criteria for another uh, 
uh, another criteria for a good research is the research design should be carefully planned to generate result to maintained objectively okay so once we are you know planned uh, different objectives different hypothesis we have to calculate we have to generate the result accordingly what we are planned like in the in the uh, process of research activities like in the format of research objectives research hypothesis okay for example uh, for example if you want to see the significant difference between two group or two uh, gender or 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 different uh, you know categories okay so then you need to put uh, operation you uh, know uh, statistical uh, variables as a t t test or to significant difference between the two different means like that okay so it should be a uh, maintained objectivity so objectives are most important so without knowing that objectivities and without knowing that you know a measurable hypothetical way okay so we can't conclude it so that is why so research design should be very carefully planned to generate result to maintain some kind of objectivities the research report uh, should be as much as possible frank enough to uh, gauge affect to the findings okay so and uh, data analysis in the research report should be adaptive to reveal its significant and the method of analysis employed be appropriate and validity reliability of the data should be examined carefully okay so these are the major you know criteria some criteria we need to follow by conducting different kinds of research activities whether it is a uh, uh, descriptive one whether it is qualitative one quantitative one what kind of research methods it may be but we need to carefully observe each and every steps which are involved in the entire research activities that should be uh, there is a logic they should have some logic while formulating research objectives and research uh, hypothesis so that is why in once you understand what is the research methods or what what is that research synopsis then you can easily understand what outcomes outcomes will be okay sometimes you can understand it sometimes you can estimate that predict that result sometimes you can't okay it's depending on uh, when where and who are supposed to conduct such kind of activity okay so ultimately so we need to bother no need to bother about the result or output part but we should uh, always uh, we should bother about the research procedure research methodology okay <clears throat> so next point so objectives of the good research the first one is to gain familiarity with the phenomena or to achieve new insight into it first we should know a variable what is the the scope of the variables the relationship between independent and dependent variables that should be very clear okay that should be measurable the variable should have some measurable component without you know measurable component in case if you put as a research titles or a research variables again you can't justify it so okay, it should be very specific sir sorry to interrupt uh, sir could you please explain what sort of variables come under independent variable and dependent variable <clears throat> okay see for example if you want to see academic stress and academic performance of the student so which is independent and which is dependent among two variables could you please repeat sir academic stress and academic performance Okay. so these are two variables different variables so here one is independent variable one is dependent variable i think what academic i think academic performance will be independent 
academic mm -hmm. performance is the dependent, dependent. variable stress is the dependent the uh, independent variable why is because it? academic performance will be obviously it is depending on how you perceive or how uh, you are stressed okay then you can see uh, there is a one more uh, there is a one more logic for that so your academic performance may be you know very accordingly your uh, you know level of academic so there is a uh, sometimes negative correlation between academic stress and academic performance for example so once your academic stress getting up okay so your academic performance getting down correct i agree okay so there is a negative correlation once you have like uh, uh, one more topic uh, your intelligence level is getting up again your academic performance also getting up. so there is a positive correlation between uh, intelligence academic intelligence as well as the you know your performance academic performance so like that can, there is a logic and uh, you know what you uh, you are uh, you know supposed to take uh, as a research variables in your research so i just want to have one clarification the variables uh, so that is why it should be measurable they should uh, have some you know clarity objectivity logic you know empirical evidence so that is why you need to check uh, you know literature reviews okay So, sir, this is the main. So, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Right. Ah, uh, sir, uh, say if I'm making a, if I'm doing a research over uh, the suicide data due to academic performance, right? So, ah, yeah. uh, there the stress will become the dependent variable, and the academic performance will become independent variable, right? Because the stress is no. coming due to bad mm. academic performance, isn't it? and which leads to the suicide yeah sometimes but so your academic performance so almost almost is you know uh, depending on performance is depending on how you are perceive it for example it is all about examination your performance will be assessed based on your academic assessment once you are worried about your examinations and all Sir's voice is breaking. I think we've lost, sir. Ah, uh, yeah, I think he is. Uh, he is locked up. I think you gave academic stress. We got disconnected. <laughs> <laughs> I think Good the job. question was very tough. <laughs> <laughs> was he is actually teaching it very well i am a statistics let's uh, wait person and he is teaching well i would say that take maximum advantage of the class Well, he joins in. Actually, this reading material talks something else. It says the dependent variable is about the prediction which is being made on the experiment, and independent is the one which affects the dependent and which you change. So, which means every situation it will change. Every study, a dependent will become independent. Independent will become. This is exactly what I asked. This is exactly what I. Asked. Yeah. That when the nature of the uh, research changes, say. if i am researching about the academic uh, performance as an end goal then it's different but when i am researching uh, say suicide data due to bad academic performance then, then the suicide when data becomes dependent variable and uh, the bad academic performance becomes the independent as per the book i, mean. I guess dependent variable is something which we are measuring something which we are studying and independent variable is uh, So Ado, very simple. simple. What causes what causes will be independent, and what is caused will be dependent. 
Yeah. Yeah, you can say that. More or less. What is causing is independent. What is caused is dependent. In every. Yeah, that sounds logical. Which influences is independent, on which it influences it is dependent. The in between okay. things will come psychological and all. They are intra-varying variables. Basically, independent variable is the cause, and the dependent variable is the yeah, yeah, yeah. And some other psychological concepts will come in between the trouble. They are intra-varying. Or uh, extraneous, as per the textbook. Yes. But since it is very circumstantial, so in each situation, uh, we'll have to be carefully. deciding which it is and maybe taking help of uh, you know somebody who knows it or something it is it is it will not it have a specific uh, uh, definition of dependent and independent it is situational so you are on mute yeah okay yes sir we, we can hear you sir Yeah, fine, sir. So sometimes it could be you know independent variable. Sometimes uh, the same variable could be dependent variable. It is depending on situation. So so that is why. So that is why when we framing that uh, different uh, research problems, we should be very careful. Okay. Sometimes uh, two variables will be independent variables. Sometimes uh, more than two, three variables will be dependent variables. Okay, how you frame that? Uh, what are the literature that you reviewed? So based on that, we can put. Okay, so nothing to worry about that. So it is all about how you perceive it, because the perception is most important. Okay, sometimes, so sometimes uh, we perceive as a positive manner. Sometimes we perceive uh, some, uh, you know, some objectives or something, uh, some information as a negative. It is individual differences will be there. while perceiving any kind of objective okay so that is why we need to give some operational definitions and theoretical definition for the variables okay so theoretical variables may be different so you can get uh, different kinds of uh, you know definition for any particular variables like uh, uh, stress anxiety depressions okay so you can get n number of definition for uh, such variables okay but operational definitions that is up to you that is up to you what exactly that you are you know supposed to assess what angle that you supposed to have you know assess so that is most important you need to give a significant difference between operational definitions as well as the theoretical definitions while assessing a particular research variable so it comes in the process of methodology okay we'll discuss that uh, the difference between operational and theoretical definition in the next process okay so here we are talking about objectives objective of good research sometimes we need to portray uh, you know accurately the characteristics of the particular individual situation or group okay so once you understand what is that research variable we need to introduce that we have to give some uh, you know theoretical information or background for that okay so without knowing you are exactly the you know meaning of or definition of the variables so you can't move forward okay sometimes uh, we need to uh, assess the, uh, the accurate way of some characteristics of the particular variable a particular individual situation or some uh, something uh, you know Uh, uh with a new uh, uh variable and third one to determine the frequency with which something occurs or with which it is associated with something else okay so, so something it comes like a uh, frequency wise uh mean median so so everything we need to calculate that it is all about to statistics okay so once you get the data data from the sample data from the populations we need to assess that we need to arrange the data properly we need to calculate we need to interpret the data so interpretation also one of the important process okay 
So it comes in terms of 0 0.05 level and 0 0.01 level. Once you understand that, what is 0 0.05 and what is 0 0.01, then you can easily understand and interpret the data. Okay. So, and then lastly, to test the hypothesis of a you know, causal relationship between variables. Okay. So, like uh, 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 between the cause and effect relation. So, which could be the independent variable and which could be the dependent variable. Once you understand the relationship between two variables, then you can put a different hypothesis or objectives of the data. So, so, these are the major, <coughs> major objective of the research. So, ultimately, as I told you, the first, the major objective of the uh, research is, okay, to enhance the overall well-being of the person, a community, a society. <coughs> okay. Uh, qualities of a good research. So, you can see a different, uh, you know, qualities when conducting a uh, uh, how it should be, how it could be like. Okay. The good research is a systematic, the first point. So, as I told you, no need to worry about, uh, you know, output, research output part. But we should be very careful while framing that research procedures, research activities, or research steps, which involves, especially in the qualitative or quantitative research activity. Okay. So systematic, how to frame, how to choose variables, how to frame that, how to frame uh, research objectives, how to frame that, uh, you know, research hypothesis. Okay, how to determine the sample size. What is the formula that we need to, you know, use? And how to find that, uh, you know, which is appropriate for the data collection, research uh, uh, statistical method. Okay, once you go through that properly in a systematic way, then only uh, you can uh, uh, expect uh, some, uh, you know, result. Okay, so that is one of the being, uh, you know, qualities of research, good research. Okay, and second thing is, a good research is empirical. That should be empirical, not theoretical one. So you can get theoretical information as a background for the research variables, but it should be empirical. We have to calculate it. We need to study empirical way with a different, uh, by following different research activities. Okay, so there is a, a certain formula which comes in the process of research activities in different uh, stages, different stages of and different units. We need to follow carefully. <coughs> okay. Good research is valid and verifiable. <clears throat> Anybody can verify that data. You can evaluate. Okay. <clears throat> the, you can, uh, uh, once you get the data, that should be a valid one. Okay. So, uh, so that is why research, uh, once you put, uh, as I told you, once you put the data into the normality, uh, normally probability curve, the data should be within the range. That should be minus two to plus two. Once the data is, you know, normality, uh, uh, normal value comes, then only we will consider data for further analysis. Further analysis in the sense, <clears throat> uh, so in case the data is below minus 2 or above plus 2, okay, the data is not normally distributed. Okay, the data is completely based. Again, we can go for further data collection fresh data collection. Okay. So, we need to careful while collecting the data. So, sometimes, uh, you know, by uh, collecting the information from the sample, study sample, <clears throat> sometimes uh, they are usually just uh, distribute the papers. Or uh, sometimes, nowadays, so what happening? Google form, through Google form only, they are collecting the data. They are concentrating on each and every question. They are understanding that. So, we don't know. Okay, so there is a, uh, by the movement, uh, there is a lot of, uh, you know, uh, uh, misleading us while, you know, entering the data or choosing the options. So that is why the data, while collecting the data, that should be in person. You should interview that, uh, the person, particular person or particular samples and try to collect the input. Okay, 
so it is all about to empirical way you know maintaining the confidentiality the consent form okay so knowing each and other okay so uh, maintaining that uh, you know good relationship a rapport relationship between uh, you know interviewer and interviewee it is most important okay so sometimes we are neglecting such uh, you know options to establish a good rapport so without establishing the rapport you can't get a proper information proper information from the client at the sample so that is why in person you approach any you know you know samples or informing uh, persons then only you can get a proper a uh, valid date it is also comes under the uh, systematic procedure we need to follow that so maximum uh, in the uh, research activities especially in the educational like uh, degree level pg level okay they usually uh, they won't maintain that uh, you know systematic procedure so that is why we can't get the exact uh, output result so that is why we are failing that uh, in output getting a proper output or uh, generalization that result or uh, you know giving a implication part to the you know policy makers so that is why we need to uh, check each and every uh, steps whether it is in the proper way or not whether it is a systematic or not okay so and the next one good research is a is logical we should have some logical you know uh, points while formulating different uh, parts of uh, research procedures okay for example hypothesis hypothesis while for, uh, for, uh, forming that uh, hypothesis or objectives that should have some logic without logic in case if you put uh, uh, hypothesis or objectives so you can't measure it you can't get uh, an expected result a predictable answer okay so that is why null hypothesis alternative hypothesis directive hypothesis there are many hypothesis terms how to frame that which hypothesis you know is appropriate in in your research activities we need to identify that there is a logic or illogic okay once you identify that then only you can put uh, in a proper objectives or hypothesis so it should be logical okay good research develop theories and principles another qualities of good research actually while conducting research activities once you follow that systematic procedures to identify the new informations so then you can easily understand what is that exactly what are the associated variables are contributing for example stress what are the stressors okay which causes stress okay maybe contributing more for that so you can easily identify okay so like that you can correlate same you know logic uh, uh, for all the research variables okay so you can just by using different questionnaires you can uh, assess the persons uh, you know stress level a uh, persons abilities <clears throat> okay abilities are in terms of uh, skills or in terms of any it could be any uh, different characteristics but okay they should have uh, some uh, uh, while framing that while you are conducting that so it frames actually it develops different theories how stress will be what are the factors that contributing for academic stress whether uh, the stressors may be academic related or non academic related okay so there is a you know uh no rules only academic uh, factors only contributing for your academic stress. okay any any stressors any stressors okay may be contributing for your academic stress also your personal issues personal problems okay so that is also one of the reasons it could be for our academic stress. okay so actually develops a good research actually develops different theories related to particular variables or uh, between two variables like that okay research is reliable obviously so in case 
if your research activities is not reliable there is the, no need to conduct such uh, research activities that should be reliable one okay so we should trust the our data trust our uh, you know research activities we, we should trust our uh, entire uh, you know what we are framing what we are uh, you know following the procedures what we are actually mentioning each and every steps in the research activity so otherwise no need to you know conduct a such research activity because it is empirical because it is a systematic procedure okay so once you follow that uh, systematic procedures obviously it is reliable okay so these are the uh, uh, good research is a systematic one empirical one and valid and verifiable good research is logical good research develop different theories and different uh, uh, principles also and research is obviously it should be lab okay and uh, research process <coughs> research process uh, uh, let me talk about uh, different uh, you know steps which involves in the uh, research process the first point is the first point the role of theories hypotheses and the paradigms of psychological research is the first point Okay, uh, can we take a uh, five minutes break? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank. Yeah. Thank you, sir.
Okay. So. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We are back. Yes, sir. So, research process. Welcome back. Uh, research process or uh, steps in a research activity. Okay. So, what are the steps that uh, involves in the entire research process or research activity? The first point is identification of the problem. Okay. So, without problem or uh, without uh, you know uh, measurable variables. So we can't go with uh, further activities in the research, okay? Uh, or further process in the research activities, like uh, uh, without variables, we can't formulate objectives, we can't formulate hypotheses, samples, so it is not possible. Sir, so, uh, so, sir, one second, sorry to interrupt. Uh, we have already covered these uh, research biases in context of justification. Did we cover? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we covered. So in the process of, uh, you know, uh, steps involved in the research activities, again, it comes. I just uh, touch up that, uh, you know, content, then okay. we move on. Okay, 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 okay. So without knowing that, so without problems, okay, so uh, without, uh, you know, measurable variables, we can't, uh, we can't uh, move forward, like, okay. So uh, for every research activities, there is a problem. Uh, there is a, you know, uh, some uh, uh, we need to find out uh, something new or betterment. So that is why we just uh, frame a research problem or a research variable. So this is the first step. Second one, so framing that, uh, framing a proper or identification of the problem, we look into some uh, literature uh, like the empirical research as well as the theoretical research. Okay, so once you go through the uh, literature, uh, review of literatures uh, by empirical or theoretical, then only it is very easy to identification of the problem, research problem. Okay. The second one is formulating a hypothesis <coughs> or objective. Formulating objectives. So once you identify that, so research is used actually. Okay. So we need to you know channelize our uh, research activity by or uh, by putting a different hypothesis or by putting different objectives. Okay, so without objects, so suppose if you want to assess the person's uh, you know, capacity or intellectual capacity, okay, or along with, the, or uh, if you want to see the academic space, okay, so what do you want to assess by using that, by knowing that? Whether you are correlating with any other variables, or you are supposed to assessing the causing factor for academic stress, or by taking that particular variables in certain uh, angles. So, what exactly that you want to you know, assess further? So, that is why. So, if you want to channelize your research activities, we need to put a different uh, objectives and hypotheses. So, the formulating a hypothesis or formulating different objectives that channelize, directed your research activity. How you have to work on it. Okay, so this is also most important. So again, there are uh, different, uh, you know, hypotheses will come, like uh, null hypothesis, directive hypothesis, alternative hypothesis. It is depending on your, uh, you know, choosing uh, variables and uh, uh, literatures empirical activities, research evidence, okay. So once you go through that, then you can easily put a, a direct hypothesis sometimes. In case if you are confused state while formulating the hypothesis, then you can put null hypothesis. It is, it is depending on availability of the literature, okay. So this is a second step, a second, uh, uh, you know, procedure. And third one, identifying, manipulating, and the controlling variables. <clears throat> Identifying variables in the sense that should be a problem. Okay, so once you identify, like uh, for example, assessment of the academic space and performance, academic performance of the employee, so it could be a problem. Again, it could be a variable. 
we can put it in a you know different as well as the you know uh, parameters okay so that should be measurable one so once you identify and manipulating so manipulating in the sense whether you place it in a directive way or indirective way okay sometimes it could be independent variable something uh, sometimes uh, the same variable could be dependent variable okay it is about to all about to how you frame how you design okay so what is uh, your aim of the study okay so what are the objectives so based on your uh, you know in, uh, intentions so the you know objectives will be taken okay so and then controlling variables also so some extraneous variables also will be there okay so we, have, we need to control the variables while conducting different uh, research activities <clears throat> okay so uh, while framing that uh, uh, objectives as well as the variables we need to look into uh, uh, such uh, angles okay so this is the third one and the fourth step formulating research design research design in the sense so as i told you there are uh, many research designs will be there okay design in the sense of parametric research activity research types descriptive correlative okay so and then uh, uh, quantitative research analysis or uh, qualitative research analysis action research okay so and then uh, so uh, many Uh, research methods or research designs will comes in the process of research activities we need to design that okay we need to design that what uh, appropriate method we we supposed to use we supposed to follow that okay so next one is constructing devices for you know observation and measurement measurement without measurement without measurement of your you know testing variables testing objectives so the research uh, you know process will be incomplete so without knowing that proper design like uh, <clears throat> okay so a uh, proper measurement it is again not possible okay so the measurement a uh, test measurement that should have some validity reliability as well as the uh, norms test the norms how to interpret okay some uh, cut off scores will be there so based on the cut off scores interpretations will be changed will be different once you understand that uh, like uh, you know measurable you know tools then only you can move forward so otherwise you will be stuck so in the initial when we are forming uh, framing that uh, you know research uh, um, synopsis or research proposal sometimes you can find that but in the process of data interpretations and data analysis you could be uh, sometimes uh, you, uh, you will uh, you know struggle while uh, interpreting the data so without any proper uh, uh, research methods or research tools okay so that is why you need to more, uh, give more importance to while choosing your research tools okay so and then sample selections and data collection <clears throat> sample selection so, so as i told you so uh, study population is most important so based on that you need to uh, determine the sample size again data collection once you identify or uh, determine the sample size then it is very easy it is very easy to collect the data <coughs> what is that presenting I think Govind Kumar has shared his screen. He needs to stop sharing. I think. And data analysis and and the interpretation. Okay, so once you collect the data from the sample uh, study populations, okay, you need to align the data. So accordingly, you are study objective. So. Uh, while you are analyzing the data you, are, you should uh, have some you know objectives or hypothesis accordingly you need to 
analyze the data and interpretation also most important whether the data is uh, significant or not significant level which level or what level 0.01 level or 0.05 level we need to interpret based on the you know value some values okay so and then drawing conclusion next step 6 to 1 so conclusion is very very important okay so whether it is match with your objectives test variables or what okay so whether it is supporting or accepting hypothesis or not okay or sometimes it could be uh, support partially sometimes it uh, reject the hypothesis so there are many variant will come once you analyze the data so in the moment of a discussion okay we need to you know address all the you know probability okay we should uh, keep everything so based on your result based on your data analysis we need to discuss in the discussion part okay so and then present uh, you know preparations and report and publication <clears throat> seventh step conclusion after conclusion so limitations uh, recommendations the major findings uh, so implication part uh, so what are uh, you supposed to you know uh, suggestion suggest for uh, you know implications for uh, policy makers so everything we need to put because it is empirical one it's a systematic uh, procedures what you have followed so definitely it gives something uh, you know valid information reliable one okay so it is most important while uh, you know writing a report to the uh, authority and publications also so nowadays uh, so everybody give importance to public uh, publications also even research work uh, phd activities research activities dissertations so once uh, uh, if you publish your research work in a reputed journals it is uh, sometimes it is equal to you know phd uh there are again uh, uh, different parameters will be there to calculating or to assess the you know your research quality and all impact factor they are talking about impact factors uh journals impact factors in case if you published uh, uh in a good impact factors journals definitely it is uh, equal to uh, a degree phd degree okay so it is all about to some you know some uh, certain fact and then uh, some parameters okay so these are the steps involved in the process of research research insights okay so next point the importance of research in psychology so as i told you research every field science arts so any field so they have been conducting the lot lot of research activities so why the research is most important in psychology so our mood will be changed uh, by uh, by movement movement revised by situation wise by uh, different condition our personality will be you know changing our uh, you know attitude will be changed or uh, so everything so our capacity intellectual level okay so it is connected with uh, some other variable uh, sometimes see when you are writing a examinations you may have such information by in uh, when you are under pressures it won't come some uh, uh, some situation creating uh, you know uh making us a different uh, you know uh, different condition like uh, positive vibes and negative vibes so that is why why you are conducting different research activities in terms of uh, learning in terms of uh, motivation perception concept learning and memory okay personality types of personality emotions feeling so for example in the beginning of the academic so we can't uh, you know expect uh, you know higher level of academic right? but at the end of the semester or nearby when you are in a, you know nearby examinations definitely uh, students uh, may be under the pressure 
so when and uh, how you are collecting the data so that is also most important sometimes based on some uh, you know facts and events we can easily correlate we can easily you know expect predict result sometimes we can't predict okay so psychological variables always you know they changing so that is why it's variable so that is why it is very important to conduct in empirical way to to find out the new facts a new information okay with the uh, with a different uh, systematic way okay so our mood or emotions so everything as i told you in the behavioral component or measurable component or more variables so that is why it is very uh, important to identify or uh, to measure the person's characteristics with a different aspect different angles a different situation then it is very easy to understand ourselves in better way okay so this is about uh, the basic information about research and the steps involved in the research activities and uh, good research uh, criteria for uh, good research okay <clears throat> so next reliability and validity what is reliability can anyone uh, define like before the research you collect data so how much reliable it is like how how much authentic they are authentic and uh, definition for reliability is so the test okay tools should should have some reliability so uh, if it is tested again it gives the same result it should give the same result after every test every test yeah and uh, this reliability of measurement yes ma'am yes yes so reliability means we should uh, reliable the test you know the questionnaire test whatever it is okay so then only uh, we can expect uh, some uh, you know uh, 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 we can predict uh, some uh, you know information a result so that is why so always that the test tools uh, test measurement should have some reliability validity or not otherwise in case if you are not uh, you know uh, taking the proper reliable one definitely you could uh, you know uh, struck in while uh, you know interpreting the data and measuring the data so as well as in the discussion part analyzing and discussion part so reliability that should uh, the test tools should have good reliable Uh, reliability validity and then standard norm norms in the sense different uh, you know a scoring pattern a cut off score whatever or interpretation so like that okay so that should again that should have uh, test uh, retest reliability uh, uh, validity content validity so everything so and the next point is crone bar alpha Cronbach Alpha, so it is about to your data. Of course, while you are you know uh, taking that information, uh, collecting the data from the samples, such uh, tools, uh, research tools should have some uh, you know reliability, validity, or not. Okay, so fine. So after the collecting the data by using such uh, standardized tools, your data should also have some values. so that is the front bar alpha okay so that should be more than 0.60 so once you measure that uh, once you find out that the front bar alpha on spss by using spss okay that should the value should have more than 0.60 then only that the data will be considered for further analysis otherwise again the entire data will be invalid okay uh <clears throat> next point so 
So now time is 45. 345. So we have a, again 15 minutes time we have. Next session will be conducted by Dr. Ramesh Tamarana. He is a professor in the uh, uh, universities. Okay, again, uh, it has a uh, huge content. Okay, so do you have any questions related to these? Uh, uh, basic information about the research. So tomorrow we'll, uh, you know, finish uh, another uh, second half of the, so your uh, first block. Okay, so variables, uh, uh, sampling, uh, determination of the sampling comes in second part, actually. So actually it is used. So within uh, uh, 15 minutes, we can't uh, cover this uh, variables and all. Okay. Uh, so it's just, uh, we can, uh, excuse you know, me, sir. Uh, sir uh, could you please guide us? Like you said, like you will be talking later about the significance difference between theoretical and uh, the operational definitions. Yeah, theoretical definitions. For example, the di uh, significance example. difference between the two. Yeah, yeah. For example, stress as a test variable. Theoretical definitions for uh, stress means, according to uh, you know some authors, okay, it's a fight and flight responses. Body's fight and flight response, right? When we have capacity to face it, definitely you could fight. When you don't have you know uh, sufficient energy or tackle or idea, uh, a particular uh, stimulus or a particular situation, definitely you will be flight from the city. So this is the body's fight or flight responses to the particular city. So this is a theoretical information or theoretical definition first. Thing. Operational definition. Operational definition, what exactly that you supposed to assess? Whether it is academic stress, what are the contributing factors? loading factor for academic stress. For example, the particular tools, assessment tools, assessing only academic stress, not personal uh, stressors or uh, any uh, economical related stressors or your, uh, you know, some extra, um, you know, uh, activities related to your uh, um, academic. So you need to define that, what exactly you are pointed out in your research activity. What is uh, academic stress? According to your research activities, you need to define that according to uh, your uh, uh, research tools. Okay, research tools. Actually, once you go through that, definitely they have given some information, uh, introductionary parts for that. Okay, so they have uh, clearly mentioned that to this question is supposed to assess what are the stressors so it may be have in the question okay so the framing question is what exactly so based on that you need to define what is exactly that tools supposed to assess so this may be a, a, a operational definition so theoretical yes. definition you can get uh, different uh, you know uh, definition for the, uh, the uh, definition for that with the uh, different uh, angles but operation and definitions that should be related to your research tool what yes. exactly you supposed to assess by using particular tools question okay thank you thank you so much sir <laughs> sir uh, a question definition uh, and operation and definition yeah. Uh, this uh, you know formula applicable to all research variables, whether it is a depression, anxiety. So anxiety, so it may be you know differences will be there uh, different uh, from uh, different authors. But what you supposed to assess depression in your research activities, you need to define that clearly. Okay, so depression like. Uh, you are depressed uh, with uh, a particular situation, 
uh, uh, with a different uh, you know uh, time being or what exactly is there any connection between independent or dependent variables what exactly that question is uh, that assessing okay for example academic stress you can get the n number of uh, academic stress question as like a, a student uh, adolescent age group as well as the adult stress it can be you know anything okay so even students even uh, you know parents so everybody under stress so stress is common for uh, you know the definition for stress is common by theoretical angle but in operational definition it could be different whether it is academic whether it is occupational whether it is parenting whether it is what what exactly that questionnaire is supposed to assess you need to define it properly with a clearly so that is operational definition okay so next so uh, you mentioned about uh, uh, when talking about reliability of a research you mentioned about uh, this cronbach alpha value which has to be at a certain value so suddenly a question coming into my mind because this is purely a mathematical uh, formula to arrive at it and uh, research in psychology especially may not produce mathematical answers so can you give an example of a research uh, you know which can uh, which can be measured using cronbach alpha in a practical purpose practical scenario so it is all about to the normality in the data sir once you put the data your data I mean uh, uh, your uh, from the sample that should be the data should be distributed normally so normally distributed curve in the sense when the mean median and mode meet together in one point so that is normally distributed curve, or bell shaped curve mm. okay so once the data is normally distributed normally distributed in the sense the 50% of the data is placed in the right side of the mean median mode and 50% of the data is placed in the left side of the mean median mode okay that should be in the middle point sir. okay so in terms of uh, mathematics that data should be should not cross more than minus 2 to plus 2 okay so okay. in case if it is cross plus uh, minus 2 to plus 2 then the data is not valid according to the in a procedure what we are following that okay the data the maximum data should be fall in between the minus 2 to plus 2 obviously the data the cronbach alpha will be comes within the uh, above the range as i told you 0 0.60 any it any practical possible. research paper uh, you can yes. say where you know this formula has been applied in your experience uh, you know any yes. research study so, name sir, in any in psychology any kind of research activities in case if you place that definitely will check cronbach alpha without without checking that cronbach alpha as well as the reliability validity or normality so we can check the normality of the data in different ways so the first point we can check the kurtasis and kinesis by checking that uh, kinesis and kurtasis we can check the uh, data normality the second thing is the cronbach alpha so this is also by applying cronbach alpha we can identify whether the data is normally distributed or not so once the data is normally distributed then only we can consider we can go with the data okay sir so again uh, we can go with the fresh data only uh, sir uh, in yeah. continuation of this uh, that normally distributed or not the data this ground back alpha so little more clarification in that continuation sir little more clarification needed because i'm not able to relate to it uh, properly like if you can give one valid example i mean uh, a small example okay okay madam definitely it comes to in uh, uh, mpc 006 statistics yeah. yeah okay so by the moment a uh, standard deviation variance uh, variance of analysis in the uh, in that particular topic it comes actually by the moment i explain what is that what is standard deviation why it is important to observe that okay so standard deviations uh, for example how you uh, the group is uh, you know deviated from the standard one 
okay that should be the standard deviation st should be very close to zero then only again this is another way of identification of the normality of the data the st value is very you know huge like uh, 20 uh, 30 so again it is uh, depending on the number of samples okay so, so Sir, is it related to the Cronbach alpha and standard deviation? Is they are related to each other? No, madam, not related to each other. But uh, by looking that, looking into that particular values in terms of SPR, in terms of Cronbach alpha and Quinnes uh, and Curtis's, definitely you can easily identify whether the data is uh, distributed normally or not. Okay, okay. Again, it is uh, depending on number of samples. Sometimes uh, SD will be okay, uh, uh, 10, 12 is okay, but uh, uh, sometimes uh, 2, 3, uh, sometimes 80, 90s also okay. Okay, so uh, the study population, sample drawing, what kind of, uh, you know, sample that you choose, whether it is a uh, probable sample techniques you followed or non-probability sampling techniques that you followed. So everything counts a lot in the process of research activities. So that is why I told you, research is nothing but systematic procedure. Ultimately, we can get new information, or get uh, new things, new knowledge. But once you go through the systematic way, then only it is very valid. So that is research, that is empirical. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Excuse me, sir, can you give us a of topic? Be covering tomorrow, please. Sorry, ma'am. What topics you'll be covering tomorrow? Can you yeah. give us an heads up? Uh, continue the same uh, level. Uh, do you have a list of the topics that you are going to cover tomorrow? Uh, okay, ma'am. Okay. Uh, you can come prepared a bit. Variables, independent variables, dependent variables, and the sampling. Okay. Sampling, uh, you know, uh, and uh, what is that? Hypothesis again, okay. hypothesis. Sampling. So block two, is it? No, block one, ma'am. Block one, okay. Okay, sir. Thank you. Comes. Okay, tomorrow we will finish it. Uh, uh, sir Mohan sir sir is left I think okay uh, other students uh, please note that another session is there 4 o'clock sir will join uh, please uh, take a break for uh, 10 minutes and come back please okay this is continuous for you sir will join take a break Ma'am, it's already four. Okay. So okay. Sir will come back. You, you, if you want to take a break, take five, ten minutes. Sir will join now. Okay. So, Ma'am, next session will be. Thank you, Ma'am. Next now. session will be same. Let us not break and come back. Be in the link only. Ma'am, next session will be MPC 006. MPC 004, Madam. It is okay. given in the schedule. Okay, because uh, it is confusing. It was here five uh, before six. No, no, no. Uh, the five and six was the confusion. No confusion in that. MPC 004 will be there, madam. Okay, thank you. Madam, when they are distributing books, madam? Sir, study materials and all will be issued by our headquarter. Okay, sir. No sir. response. Nobody is taking care. So no, we are struggling, because madam. we also keep sending the mails to headquarter. Okay. By this time, they should have issued. We will uh, see, sir, because they are not sending to regional center also. Whatever is sent, 10%. No, I received it, madam. I received yeah. it. Because? Yeah, whoever, even I received it, actually. Yeah. Whoever has taken re, uh, registration in the beginning, the data they will take and it's already printed and distributed. For the students who have registered a little late, for them, it is under print now. It will come, sir. Please wait. Okay. Madam, but I registered in the month of uh, Ju July last year. <coughs> uh, yes. Two more books is pending, ma'am. Five and six. I have still not received. Five, six, ma'am. Okay. Yeah. We'll last, check, madam. We'll check. I've sent a mail to you also, RC yeah. Bangalore, right? That's your RC mail. RC Bangalore, yeah. Whatever yeah. is sent, we will forward to our headquarter, mpdd.ignu.tc.in. Okay. 
yeah that we will check madam this is the problem that's uh -huh. what i have sent a link also please cooperate with us uh, uh, keep preferring the soft copy of the materials available till then mm. madam okay because uh, uh, five and six are important uh, uh, yeah, I, know, I, I know research yeah. uh, <laughs> statistics yes it's important yes yes thank you yes madam uh, thank you madam sir uh, ramesh sir already joined i think sir yes, uh, welcome yes. sir uh, I was just talking to the students, sir. So they okay, ma'am. Okay, okay, okay. Five Thank minutes you. break, I think. Uh, yes, yeah, I'll just take time. Uh, yeah. Students, shall we continue? Sir has already joined. Yes, ma'am. We can. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, sorry, we could not give any break to you all. Uh, please cooperate. Ma'am, I uh, I'll give break after forty-five minutes to them. Yes, sir. This is yes, my sir. first class. Yes, sir. And it is short notice. That is what I informed. Mohan sir. Yes, sir. And, no issue, sir. Yeah. It is, yeah. Once we will introduce and leave it to you, sir. You can take break uh, any time. Okay, sir. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, um, sir uh, I take this opportunity to uh, the welcome uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Ramesh Babu, sir, the academic counselors for uh, counselor for this session. I welcome you, sir, on behalf of uh, IGNU and on behalf of our regional center Bangalore, on behalf of all our uh, students joined for the set first year MA psychology and uh, thanks for uh, giving the consent to be the academic counselor for IGNU learner sir thank you very much and uh, I just request our uh, Dr. Mohan sir please introduce uh, Ramesh sir to the students sir okay, okay. Uh, Dr. Ramesh Babu Tamarana is a uh, you know, academic counselor and also lecturer in uh, Christ Academy Christ University Bangalore uh, since he is uh, working in the uh, uh, Christ Academy, uh, I think uh, three years from last three years, uh, now uh, he is handling uh, what is MPC 002. I think a four, no, sir. Uh, yeah, MC, MPC 004. So that is a, a social psychology. So that is social psychology. Uh, okay, sir. You can uh, over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Now the session you, is handed over to Ramesh Babu, sir. Sir, Thank you me. can. Uh, okay, sir. Continue the session, sir. Thank you Thank very you, much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. Um, I'll give a little introduction to everyone. Hello, everyone. Uh, myself, Dr. Ramesh Babu Tamarana. Uh, I've been working uh, with Christ University, Bangalore, Banaragata Road Campus in the Department of Applied Psychology. Uh, I do regularly teach uh, cultural psychology and forensic psychology, quantitative research methods and statistics for behavioral sciences for undergraduate students. Uh, previously to that, I'll, I was also working in Rajiv Gandhi National Institute of Youth Development. Sri Parambadur. I think uh, by February 22nd, I would be finishing, completing five years of my teaching experience, both undergraduate and postgraduate courses. Uh, Mohan, sir, is my senior uh, while doing my PhD. So through him, I got this an opportunity. Uh, it was a short notice, uh, like he contacted me some two days back. So I need a little bit time. I'll handle the class around one hour today. Then probably tomorrow we'll you know, speed up the process. And uh, I hope everybody is there, right? Any response? Yes, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Yes, sir, we are here. Yeah, yeah, we are here. Oh, okay. Yes, sir, thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Uh, let me share. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Now, please mute the mics, all the students. Please mute your mics. Okay, once you are done. Yes, uh, I hope you can see the PowerPoint presentation. Yes, sir. Yes, yes yeah. sir. Thank you, sir. So, this is the first unit in this um, MPC 004 for social psychology. I think uh, this module can be taught in four hours, entire module in two days time. Uh, today I'll be covering, uh, this is for nature and concept of social psychology. 
and social psychology related to other disciplines and some historical perspective. Uh, today, uh, for the discussion, um, I'll be dealing with a few concepts like what is, you know, how do you define social psychology and what social psychology scope and also some historical perspective, the development of social psychology as a scientific discipline. Uh, so these are the three concepts that uh, I'll be uh, explaining you today, right? Uh, I hope uh, these are a different cohort, I understand, because you might be working somewhere or you might be, you know, um, interested in to learn psychology. Some are working people or some could be, you know, the students, regular students who are interested in psychology. Uh, the mostly I would like to, you know, make it more interaction. So uh, like I would like to, you know, listen sometimes, like what is your uh, understanding about these basic concepts? And I'll continue based on your the introduction, right? Uh, do not, you know, um, unmute everyone same time. Probably if you have something to tell, uh, you can unmute yourself. Meanwhile, you can ask me questions or if I raise any questions, probably you can, you know, answer if you know the answer, right? Uh, so today, uh, as I said, this is uh, the beginning of social psychology. So the social psychology, like uh, I'll be giving two definitions for what is social psychology. The basically, um, if you look at the definition, the broader definition is the social psychology is the scientific study of how people think about influence and relate to one another. So if you look at just one line definition, it's actually talks so much. Uh, that is the reason one line, but I said very broader definition. Uh, it is actually talking about the social thinking and also social influence and also social relations. So you might have a doubt what we you know, what social psychologists actually do under the social thinking. If you look at it, social psychology is a scientific study of social thinking under which probably will be, uh, you know, social psychology would answer questions such as, how we perceive ourselves and others in different contexts and what we believe and also the judgments we make and also the attitudes we have for certain contexts and certain people, right? So the self-perception is most important. Many times, uh, you know, people may not believe us or may not see that we are worthwhile but this is something that you know it start from you know individual level so how we perceive how i perceive myself or how we as a group perceive so for example if i say that how do we perceive ourselves like you know we are a small cohort you know like a, um, you know from igno like who are interested in you know learning psychology and you know for your uh, you know understanding or some people are doing for career growth and all right so sometimes if you ask like you know who we are like you know we identify ourselves based on our identity so for example i would say that you know when we are with a very pretty simple example how we view ourselves or perceive ourselves say for example when we are uh, asking you someone uh, where are you from probably you could say that you know i'm from Andhra, I am from Tamil Nadu, like, uh, like who you are. So probably I could say I'm Tamilian, I'm Telugu, like, you know, so for example, when the context changes, when we perceive ourselves. So for example, if someone say I'm from basically Vishakhapatnam. So if somebody asks me, where are you from? I won't say I'm from Andhra Pradesh, right? Because I'm in one of the city in Andhra Pradesh, probably I would say that the my village, if I come to know that they are from, they knew where I come from. Otherwise, I would say the nearby town, like where I have come from. But when I'm in Bangalore, probably, where are you from? I say I'm from Andhra Pradesh. So for example, we are watching a cricket match in international state in Bangalore. Uh, or, you know, like, you know, we all identify ourselves as an Indians. When Indian match, you know, like Indians are playing with the other group, right? So the context actually changes how you view our ourselves and others so for example if if you 
view ourselves belongs to a particular sector, a particular political party, and we also view our the others in a particular, you know, like uh, opposite views, right? So sometimes social thinking is also basically talks about what we believe in ourselves and also judgments we make about. Like, you know, most of the times we have our own uh, reservations, we are, we have our own um, prejudices or, you know, understanding about the people and also the attitudes about, you know, different phenomena. And also the social psychology is also study of scientific, uh, scientific study of social influences. Under the social influences, we learn about the culture, like we learn about, you know, the pressures to conform and persuasion and also we you know social influences of groups of people basically the one important uh, concept under the social influence is the culture if you you know uh, see what is culture is culture is basically about you know is the collective understanding about you know um, the practices or the belief systems or the traditions a particular group of people in a particular group of you know um region you know the people follows so for example in india we have you know different types of subcultures like you know we say indian culture or southern india or north india or northeast india or you know every state has got their own unique culture unique belief systems unique practices so so all those uniqueness comes from you know where we are born like you know uh, what are the uh, what are our cultures uh, what are our parents or you know elders taught us about you know various things so all our behavior is basically dependent on all those you know social culture and pressures to conform and also the persuasion or which group we belong to like so for example in forensic psychology um, every time we teach, you know, why adolescents are more vulnerable for, you know, prone to involve some kind of risk-taking behaviors. Because when we are, when I am alone, probably I wouldn't pick up a fight with someone. But I am, I belong to a gang, and you know, I perceive that the gang is a huge, and I you know I would start picking up a fight or you know start picking up an argument with someone because i know that i'm very safe for you know among that group members and nobody could touch me so the kind of behavior you know individual behavior is dependent on the social influence as a groups of people and we'll be discussing throughout this you know uh, social psychology uh, material through the social psychology material in depth you know in future classes and also social, social psychology is the study of scientific study of social relations. What are the social relations in this particular, you know, uh, dimensions? It includes prejudice, aggression or attraction or intimacy and also helping nature. So the kind of, you know, recipro uh, reciprocity or, you know, reciprocative behavior. So these are the some of the concepts that we learn and you know that the social psychology studies right i hope uh you know uh you all understood what is the definition of social psychology yes, so yes. Quick question i have a quick question sir. yes yes um, um okay yeah so uh, my question is like the way you explain social psychology is the scientific study of social thinking social influence and social relations okay so I mean, the way it is termed as social, I, I felt like, okay, it is, it is, you know, uh, like we study the behavior of, of an individual or we study the behavior of a group or we study the behavior of both. Uh, yeah, right. Uh, very good question. No? That's the reason I had an, another definition, which much explains this. So what social psychology studies, it's concerned with the social behavior. But it includes, like, you know, my behavior is dependent on several other factors. So the basically, social psychology is about the social behavior, but the social behavior is not separate. Like, I'm part of a social group. I'm a social, you know, member. I'm a member of a particular social group, right? So basically, what social psychology does is it concerns of, with social behavior but includes the way the people influence with each other's 
attitudes and behavior and also it also includes the impact that individuals have one have one on another so that's the reason i have explained you know like you know how my behavior is influenced from my social group whom i you know belong to whom i perceive that i belong to a particular group see it is not just it studies both both individual how my behavior is dependent on you know uh, comes from the social group and also we study as a group as a whole how one group interacts with another group okay thank you sir thank you right? so much yes. sir uh, can you uh, talk about persuasion for, for I, a yeah ma'am i yeah. i will okay. you know we have several theories okay, so okay. I, i'll just left this we'll explain more okay. this is just thank a basic you, introduction ma'am yeah 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 any other questions no fine so so if you look at these points the third point it also includes the impact of social groups have on individual group members like if i belong to a particular social group a particular sect so how that particular group influences each and every one of the group members that also the uh, studies uh, social psychology studies and also the impact that individual group members have upon the social group it's a vice versa how group influences my behavior how i influences how i influence my social you know social group and also the impact the social groups have on the other social groups so it's everything about the behavior of an individual with regard to the behavior of you know other social groups other people whom we are regularly interacting with it right these are the two definitions it is an actually you know uh, in continuation what we learned you know from the first definition it's basically the scientific study of you know how an individual interacts with the other social groups so based on these definitions can anybody summar summarize or you know tell me one or two points what could be the scope of social psychology if you have an idea i'll just wait for 30 seconds then i'll continue if i don't receive any comments what could be what could you think that you know the scope of social psychology it could be studying a particular society or a particular you know uh, set of uh, or group of people or uh, a particular set of society maybe depending on you know uh, it could be location or country or you know it could be okay okay thank you thank you ma'am um yes i i think it could also be something to explain uh, about uh, about a uh, riot or uh, you know uh, behavior in a say for example in a stadium or something like that hurt behavior or anything like that to exp- yes yes what yes. influences motivates them and all that yes yes exactly oh. it's like one way anthropology we can say anthropology yeah it's a social psychology is actually mm-hmm. brought its wings from different field like sociology anthropology cul- culture right ma'am yeah, so basically you know social group yes 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 and their interactions and how they interact amongst themselves yes. so based on this you know my understanding and you know looking at the material i had come up with five points like what could be the scope of social psychology so these are the five important points could be the scope of social psychology say for example understanding and explaining social behavior and the social influence like you know, we will be able to you know social psychology makes us you know make us understand and explain you know various kinds of you know behavior you know in the different social platforms and also how the social groups influences probably including how individuals are influenced by the thoughts feelings and actions of others so for example some are, are easily persuaded by right just you know if you read one book or you know if you just attend one meeting like you know uh, like you know one community meeting or one uh, religious meeting like you know uh, that group or one individual who you know explains things that you know as a group we collectively be influenced easily like you know persuaded by the other people like easily conformed you know 
uh, from the rest of the because it's a collective decision. So the basically it's a one of the scope that you know the social psychology makers understand and explain the social behavior and the social influences. And also it has a second point like you know it examines the cognitions or you know thought processes and emotions role in the social behavior including our own perceptions right sometimes we have our own perceptions you know uh, sometimes we all experience so we never met anybody like you know by looking at them some of us might have our own reservations like you know uh, how others would be and you know we mean we we may never interacted with that particular individual because somebody or one of our friend or family members said that the particular x or y is like that without interacting without you know talking to them you know we will have our own perceptions about the particular individual like you know he's good he's bad you know he's you know he's a problematic you know such perceptions we'll have so basically how our thought processes you know how our own cognition our own emotions you know uh, role uh, plays a role in our social behavior including our attitudes and the beliefs and you know what could be the motivation for us this could be another uh, scope of social psychology and the third uh, point is investigating the impact of social norms and values on individual behavior including the social identity including the group dynamics including the intergroup relationships right so for example uh, the couple of minutes back i had given the example of you know the stadium behavior right like say for example when somebody when we are watching a movie like you know uh, i still remember as a you know um, a student of you know pondicherry central university every time uh, there is a cricket match right there is a couple of people who uh, you know supports a particular group especially ipl right so for example when we watch an indian cricket match with some other country we watch we believe that you know our indian team must win and you know we have so much emotions but we watch a movie between you know rcb and you know chennai super kings probably you identify you know you have so much emotional attachment and half of the players in both the groups are from our own, our own indian country but still our emotions you know go along with our you know the particular group whom you belong to you know like you know if you are probably kannadiga probably i should go you know you should uh, be you know like you know expecting you know rcp do very well in the match and you know oppose opposition team whether it is hyderabad or you know chennai probably you know like you know these things you know how these particular you know group dynamics or you know uh, social identity influences the kind of you know behavior you know what we perceive right uh, like basically the social norms and values a particular individual holds on it the social norm is actually a the bigger topic uh, i think how social norms influences our day to day behavior so for example if i born and brought up in india probably i might learn certain cultures but if i'm comparing with uh, you know um, someone from who are born and brought up in united states or you know some african community these those people cultural practices or belief systems or you know everything everything would be different so our own behavior is actually dependent on you know, social norms what is expected from us you know uh, out of you know our own behavior so these are the certain you know uh, the uh, you know important points that social psychology is actually help us to understand and also the fourth important point is it helps us analyzing the effects of social and cultural context on our own behavior including the cultural differences and stereotypes and also the prejudice like you know uh, the belief systems we hold you know the, uh, like you know about a particular people uh, individual a particular group of people a particular religion or you know uh, how you you view the different culture and all those things are you know actually help you know social psychology actually make us understand and the final point could be the one of the scope i thought that you know studying the ways in which technology and media shape social behavior and attitudes because i just wanted this point because we are all living in 21st century we are all dealing with gen z you know uh, generation like you know people who are in, especially me i am a you know psychology teacher at christ university 
you know you know it just you know when i compare my undergraduate level and you know the current undergraduate students so how the social media impacted their behavior like you know being a psychology professor at you know such a prestigious institute most of our students you know complain about you know uh, loneliness depression anxiety substance abuse what not everything so when i actually you know analyze i do a lot of research i do read several researches i understood that you know like uses of the social media is the one of the uh, you know of the major impact on the current generation so for example using instagram the reels or you know or like you know everybody wanted to have some kind of an approval like you know um, exposing you know like media exposure to various behaviors like many of the current generations or you know having uh, eating disorders like bulimia nervosa and other things because they wanted to be certain figure and you know certain shape for that you know you know they have they engage in risky behaviors and the, all those things you know studying the ways in which technology shape the social behavior and attitudes including how the impact of social media and online communication is actually you know uh influences the social behavior uh you know every time i watch an online news channel you know any news item i do observe that you know people use very foul language you know abusive languages because you know in a group because a news is belongs to a particular group and a particular individual if you are pro to that individual like you know it it influences like you know all those you know communication because many of us you know in those you know social networking sites especially the youtube news channels and all people use the fake ideas and you know they make very vulgar comments and all so actually how the social media and the you know technology influences the social behavior like this is a behavior probably i wouldn't have you know i wouldn't have said those words if i am talking to someone you know of the directly but because i am you know i'm being online because i believe that you know no one could be recognizing who i am because i have a fake id and fake email id probably i thought that you know i could say whatever i wanted to say so this could be the these are the five important points i thought you know i'll be dealing with you know on various lectures like you know the social psychology topics that you know to understand the social behavior right before uh, i move on uh, to further topic is there any clarifications required at this point no sir this is really good <laughs> thank you yeah fine uh the next one your teaching style is great actually really want to say tell that i'm really enjoying it actually enjoying i'm feeling awake sir thank yes. you so much <laughs> yeah <laughs> presentation is really good sir thank you you are explaining uh, in detail so uh, we are get, uh, taking my uh, getting it very thoroughly thank you so much sir thank you ma'am thank you uh, happy to heard that uh, sir you should handle the important papers also i think sorry ma'am other papers which are important i think you should take those up also <laughs> i have given uh, you know my consent for two papers ma but as of now i got one paper it's the management decision uh, okay. thank you i'm actually very happy to hear uh, that you know positive comments right so yeah okay. so i have a question yes so uh, i think somebody uh, if you are not talking unmute yourself i think somebody is getting call from Sir, some know. noise coming yes so, sir go ahead so so like you all like we uh, measure these and analyze these different uh, social behaviors and how uh, social media or different things are affect uh, the behavior of individuals or communities so how do we identify that uh, the causes um, like how do we analyze that uh, uh, this could be the cause of a particular kind of behavior in a community so sir uh, uh, let me give one example yeah. probably we will not be able to understand you know the reason why an individual say for example i just give you one example uh, i am very much interested in politics you know i do follow politics thoroughly so for example if you see that you know if you love if i love a political a particular political party whether my political leadership 
is good or bad you know whether uh, he or she is you know a uh, thorough or doing you know good governance or not you know if i belong to a particular group if somebody make a comment even the you know uh, one a good question raised by opposition party or you know uh, the the you know uh, the ruling party questions the other one so more than the political leaders the people who we watch you know like you know people like us right and you know right take those things very seriously we forget about the context we forget about the you know uh, the information whether the information is accurate or not you know what understanding we had or not we we take it so personally and you know started abusing the other person we never spoke about you know whether the comment or the question raised by the other individual by other individual is uh, you know that is something that we have to explore or not we just forget it so only thing is we are so emotionally attached to the political party or the political ideology we cannot take it any more you know uh, you know um, in a democrat you know you know democratic or you know the dialogue like you know how i should talk about that particular thing so what i'm what i wanted to say that the social behavior because is anonymity so i i show all my anger could be the reasons are so much because sometimes uh, you know if you look at the uh, just an example now every political party is hiring you know people to you know uh, you know spread the wrong propaganda like you know they wanted to you know make aware like you know if you see every political party is associated with in you know, a particular team of people the team of people will give you know all those you know uh, uh, the agenda to you know carry forward so when we carry forward those agendas you know it becomes so hatred you know hateful to the others we we sometimes you know when i read the comments sometimes i have i feel so ashamed of you know reading those comments whether we are civilized or you know we are gone back to the you know 1000 or 2000 years back even you know we are living in a civilized world like you know we can have an internal dialogue or you know between the whether interpersonal dialogues which is much more appreciated and you know much more you know uh, you know the positive way of that so the understanding is the whole how the media shape of the social behavior like you know the misinformation the kind of information was you know uh, shared by the people in the social media say for example one simple example i don't like x party so y party started spreading the rumors through whatsapp facebook you know no some posters they will make it. without cross checking whether something is right or wrong whether something had happened or not because i belongs to some ex political party or ex ideology i'll just spreading that particular you know uh, uh, material to you know all my con contact so did i ever check the authenticity of that information whether that authenticity is correct or right or whether that particular thing had happened or not right so a couple of uh, weeks you know couple of months back you know there are social issues or religious issues happened in karnataka itself right somewhere some part one individual starts that you know we carry forward across the states across the you know um, districts so that is what basically we study how the technology and media you know influences the social behavior that is what my idea is sir if you sorry the online behavior uh, etc is shweta priya can number. you mute yourself please somebody is yeah somebody has to mute shweta yes has to mute herself. yeah so uh, the behaviors in the social media etc uh, those are more aggravated because of the anonymity yes uh, that is what i said that is the first point then why would we classify it as a social behavior because i behave differently in a society and i behave very differently when i get anonymity so uh, no social media is also part of society so i think yeah, exactly. we have to study it yeah exactly yes right sir yes thank you for intervention and somewhere i feel every behavior whatever whatever the behavior is it is affected when we interact by with the other person whether yeah. you are interacting with two individuals 10 individual or 100 individuals it like when you when the moment we say interpersonal communication right whether you are talking to your own family member whether you are talking about the teacher or colleague it's a social interaction right sir yeah I understand. 
yeah exactly. everything is included yes sir yes sir <laughs> yeah sir i have one question so like yes. uh, in school like the bullying that happens with children like yes, all sir. of them would group together and try to tag one child as something and then is that included under social psychology yes ma'am there is a group dynamics right so for example exclusion bullying happen bullying actually happens in three ways so for example if you look at the definition for bullying is it's a kind of you know any harm you know we aim to you know cause for others whether it is emotional you know like whether it is a psychological harm or a physical harm right and okay. that harm is taken place repeatedly like you know sometimes with my word i might hurt you once mm -hmm. without my knowledge mm -hmm. but if i am keep on doing it with the intention that is what bullying right mm -hmm. then then it also like you know exclusion because i don't you know as a as a professor i see mm -hmm. you know my students that there are you know first year when they joined in the first three months entire class as a group hmm. when they reach second semester third semester i can say that there are multiple groups in the classroom right. based on your interest based on your state based on the language like you know one group by the time they reach sixth semester fifth semester many groups they were not they do not talk to other person so they maintain so much you know enmity towards the end of the course it's not about the enmity it's about the ideology like you know one person completely uh, you know uh, exclude entire class exclude one individual because of in you know, a small mistakes i say that you know the last year uh, being a class teacher it happened in one of my classes that one person has to leave the university because the individual felt that it is a complete social exclusion from the rest of the class you know imagine in 50 class you know 50 or 60 members of a class if one individual feel you know feeling that you know entire class is excluding how the person feels about it mm -hmm. so it's a it's about the group dynamics right? right why a particular group of people does you know kind of you know doing this harm to other person probably they may not understand the seriousness about it but the person who is being bullied would understand the you know pain of it right yes sir yes sir thank you so much sir yes okay uh so can i continue yes, yes sir yes, yes. Sir. yeah sure sir yeah so the historical perspective if you look at the uh, history of you know social psychology the developmental social psychology is relatively very young uh, because uh, you know, psychology itself is relatively very young because it started in the 19th century uh but you know if you look at the in first time in 1898 norman triplett uh, researcher published there's a first study in social psychology uh, at that time when he published it nobody thought this could go under the social psychology but what is the study is basically is he investigated what is the effect of competition on performance like you know through this study it's a very small study imagine it happened in 1898 he found that people perform better on familiar tasks when the presence of others than when alone so for example if you know uh, any kind of you know familiar task if i am doing it on alone probably i may not do that extend very good but in the presence of others so for example when there is a small competition like you know everybody is trying to you know compete the other person and you know wanted to do it very well so basically he says that there is an effect of competition and the performance if a particular individual perceives that you know i would be getting praise if i win that because if i wanted to do alone the probably i may not you know like i may not do very well that particular task because it's i'm doing it for my own but say so for example i'm doing it for the you know instead of getting approval or praise or a reward because it's a competition probably i put a lot of effort to win that particular task whatever the task so this is the first of its kind in 1898 and he says that yes the competition is uh, you know the has an effect on the individual's performance right and you know followed by in 1908 William McDougall a psychologist and also E H Ross from sociology background each independently published 
the first textbooks in social psychology. Then since 1950s, after that, there is a, you know, a complete, uh, what to say, uh, not such groundbreaking work. But, you know, in 1950s, the field started developing very rapidly with an expansion in both theoretical foundation and also the scientific study in the area, you know, how individual behavior is influenced by the social or, you know, how one particular group influence the other attitudes, persuasion, compliance, and all those things. Like, you know, in that particular you know, order, if you look at it in the first time, Web Planck in 1950s suggested that social approval influences the behavior. It's a continuation of what uh, the previous author, like, you know, Norman Triplett has found. In his study, uh, Web Planck showed that the course of conversation, course of a conversation changes dramatically based on the feedback from others. So, for example, it's very, you know, understood, right? So, for example, if you are a part of a small group, in that small group, everybody is, you know, praising about the way you speak, the way you narrate the story. And, you know, the probably you keep on doing that because every time you does a particular behavior, you know, you get price, you get approval from the rest of the group members. That actually creates a kind of, you know, positive nature, that particular, you know, uh, it's a kind of, you know, punishment and reinforcement, right? The, every time we get a, a, a reward or an approval, an individual tend to repeat that particular behavior because it's, it's, it's a kind of, you know, giving a positive feedback as yes, I'm getting approval Yes, I'm getting, you know, uh, you know, um, recognition from the rest of my group. So that is what he found that the social approval definitely influences the behavior. So, for example, if social disapproval, so somebody had done something wrong and, you know, everybody disapproves it, that also changes the individual behavior because you may not be repeating that particular behavior because in the first occasion itself, you you know your behavioral got disapproval, and uh, in the in the later days, where Planck, along with the Ivan P. Pavlov and E. L. Thorndike and Clark Hull and B. F. Skinner, and all these people, you know, helped together, you know, work together, and you know, established a kind of reinforcement theory. I hope you might have uh, you know learned about the classical conditioning and operant conditioning, right? So I'm talking about the operant conditioning because operant conditioning is dependent on the, you know, the consequences of any particular behavior. So, for example, when a child does small mistake, uh, you know, like if a mother and father punishes the child, the tendency for the child is, you know, not to repeat the behavior because he understood that, you know, this is the behavior. I'm not supposed to repeat the behavior because every time I repeat, uh, you know, every time I made a mistake, probably I would get you know, uh, some punishment from my parent. So sometimes if our children doing very well, we, you know, uh, reward the child, you know, praise, you know, kiss the child. Probably the child, you know, understood that this is the kind of behavior I should, you know, repeat the behavior because every time I receive, probably my mother would kiss me, my mother would give me some kind of a reward, right? So it's basically as a reinforcement theory based on the ideology of, you know, the classical conditioning and operant conditioning to understand the perspective in studying the social behavior. So this reinforcement theory basically holds that behavior is motivated by anticipated rewards. If I anticipate some positive reward, I know I'll repeat the behavior. If I anticipate a kind of a punishment, probably I would not repeat the behavior. I would not engage that particular behavior like because I know that what would be the consequences of that particular behavior, all right? So the later in 1960s and 70s, followed by Verplank work and the work of Ivan P. Paolo and other researchers, Albert Bandura started his theory of, you know, social learning theory. And in this, through this social learning theory, he actually questioned the, you know, challenged the ideology of, you know, the reinforcement theories or, you know, uh, the behaviorism was put forward by Ivan P. Paolo and others because it is not this anticipations of, you know, the reward or punishment is basically learning through, you know, the behavior is learned through motivation, you know, imitation, because we imitate as a child, as a child, from the very beginning, we observe, you know, our mother and father, 
because the child is capable of you know uh, identifying you know like their you know like someone who they can trust right so every time they see mother they're so happy every time they see you know stranger if sometimes we see that you know if stranger wanted to say hi or you know uh, positively engage you know the child started crying is because he don't feel that any kind of attachment with the strange person so we learn certain things by learning uh, you know by imitating others it's a kind of a model behavior if i love uh, you know uh, if i my father or my mother is a role model most of my behavior comes from you know observing my own parents and you know learning and understanding if i say for example most of the times in adolescence during the adolescence we have you know a hero worship some you know we understand you know like you know we love a particular hero or a heroine probably we you know a kind of you know imitating their behaviors right especially it happens in the during the adolescence because that is the time a lot of influences comes from the external sources right especially uh, a kind of you know hero worship starts there so initially during before that every child start learning their own behaviors observing their own elders their own parental figures and grandmas and grandparents so these are the particular you know if you look at the theories like one by one how the uh, you know this historical perspective has actually you know influenced it so this is a basically historical perspective before i open for questions i just would like to give you know um uh, a caution it's a, not a caution i have gone through the uh, material like you know igno material which was shared by the uh, you know the team uh, i might incorporate the very latest information if because my style you know i'm a professor you know most of the times i go with you know a lot of readings and social psychology research in you know, the contemporary areas sometimes if you are just following the same igno book only igno book sometimes you might think that i am deviating no i'm not going to deviate like actually i'm giving more information wherever is possible through my examples looking at the other textbooks and all uh, if at all if any student believes that okay a particular topic according to the textbook according to the igno book if i miss anything please do let me know sir this is the particular topic actually you missed probably in the next class i would you know like incorporate every time if you think that i miss any topic all right it's my small uh, request to all of you sure sir we will inform you definitely yeah yes uh, any uh... yes sir sir i have a question yes ma'am uh, are the assignments uh, corrected by you itself sir Uh, Ma'am, uh, I do not. The subject. Know. I have to talk to. Ah, uh, sir, uh, you know, madam, just, these so, are all administrative no. uh, things. Uh, we will discuss later. Sir is uh, just okay. handling the classes. That and all, yes. we will okay. decide, madam. Okay. Yes. No, uh, ma'am. He See, said like. Only my request giving... is no, ma'am. My request is because, like, it's you know sometimes I may miss you know. Say for example, you might be following the igno book, right? So my idea is, if a particular topic you think that sir. you haven't covered a particular topic you just let me know like probably in the next class or in the same class i will just engage you know uh, you know explain the particular topic sure sir so sure that sir. is what my idea is but yes. definitely i will go through the material whatever has given so i'll try to explain everything right sir i have a question yes. uh, am i audible yes ma'am your order uh, so my question is from this 1898 norman triplet theory yes. uh, the effect so of competition on performance small study yes yeah so uh, what i'm trying to say is uh, when we work with children of today's generation uh, uh, this uh, competition is like the primary uh, way of learning for today's generation right yeah. right from the beginning uh, they are they have to fight for their seat in the school and they have to fight for the seat in the bus and and the classroom and everything else and the parents are also raising them to you know fight some competition and win some competition every day is a competition and yes. now in this context the most of the challenges that adolescent kids are uh, you know facing comes from the competition perspective you know okay. they are over over exposed to competition in their life 
and by the time they reach say 12 13 14 and by the time they have access to internet they have access to voice out their opinion they have access to money where they can use substance abuse and stuff like that these kids are going out of hand so you know how to understand this in in social psychology perspective how to address it in from uh, from current uh, days model perspective not really from thinking from igno books perspective i am talking yeah ma yeah right question ma that is what you know many of my students also engage that you know whenever i interact with students they says that you know the parents are very toxic say they use very strong words like because uh, you know some of the parents are you know wanted the children to do very well so for example when i when we have you know admission interviews and all like you know everyone come after one year two years of you know trying for neat examinations engineering je and other things because everybody is bothered about the marks for 90% 98% because that's a kind of even parenting so for example when i did schooling i'm just in 30s like you know i know you can you know uh, you know uh, identify yourself like you know a couple of years back our parents were not that kind of in expectation so for example i have come from a small village where my even today my parents do not know what i am doing what you know psychology and all but as a child i never had this kind of you know uh, expectations high expectations from my own parents right so whatever i do whatever i did you know they approved it only thing is they want me to settle well in the life that's it but the process they do not know because this current generation it's a like actually second generation and third generation where our grandparents were well educated and you know doing very well and their parents were in a good jobs and you know so socially is you know uh, the hierarchy was very good they had a huge expectations what they missed in their life so for example i couldn't become a doctor so my child should become a doctor so it's a kind of you know where we are you know forcing the child to do what we are not able to do it so like even a small kid has to undergo a lot of say for example if any international school forget about the universities they have to compete their you know their own you know childhood friends like you know five years six years seven years it's all creating a kind of a problem you know unwanted you know pressure on the children and moreover in indian parenting ma'am i could tell from you know i do teach cross cultural psychology indian parenting do not understand most of the indian parents i'm not generalizing everyone uh, with caution note most of our parents you know do not understand the individual differences not every individual is capable of doing everything whatever we expect so mm-hmm. we need to understand what is the cap- capability of an individual some are very good at studies some are very good at you know sports some are very good at you know businesses you know as a ch- as a parents probably after a couple of you know years like 10th standard or plus we need to give a scope for you know exploring their own interest not forcing someone you know you know do what we expect them to do it so say so for example many people you know which i interact last year i selected one individual uh like you know someone who did four years mbbs course in uh, you know abroad she couldn't finish any single subject because parents forced her to go you know long term coaching for mbbs in india like she couldn't get the through neat examination so because they were well off they have sent to different country um, but the country there she was not able to handle the pressure and after four and you know six years she was sought an ex, you know admission for bsc psychology honors because the parents for her parents to you know accept her ability accept you know her interest like what she wanted to do it took six years six years is not a single thing right it, it's not you know six years now after six years imagine you are coming and sitting with your own just 19 year old friends friends in the classroom but still people are doing very well so my idea is that you know yes we understand everybody is about the marks everybody is about the uh, you know like you know ma'am i have failed in my plus 1 and plus 2 I, i come from a rural india rural andhra pradesh i i have failed in plus 1 english and plus 2 english 
but still i am working in christ university one of the top private university i hope my english is not that bad right but these boundaries right. these boundaries are today mitigated i see i work with uh, an uh, inclusive school uh, yes. this is a international school where uh, they have inclusive uh, pattern i am not a teacher i am a shadow teacher uh so i get to interact with a lot of special need children their parents and a lot of general neurotypical children and their parents and the kind of ideas i am getting it's scary uh, the way world is moving so i'm giving you a very simple example school is preparing for annual function there is a pressure from every parent that every child should dance every child should sing now the teachers you know they are not they have not learned to become teachers most of the teachers in our schools they are teachers because they could not get any other job you know so they are not educated to handle these issues and pressures just imagine a child who wants to go to library and sit in their free time to learn are being forced to dance because the parents want they want to see them dance on that particular day and i can see the stress in child you know some of them are having severe anxiety some of them i'm referring them to go to saint teachers and here and there and we trying to address this issue and somehow i'm i'm perplexed which way the world is I moving i do agree ma'am i do agree like you know i say that you know substance abuse is very huge among the undergraduate yeah. students in bangalore like you know they knew everything they you know like ganja cigarettes any you know substances e cigarettes because they say that you know the pressure from their parents that is what they says sir i don't want to do this i don't want to because my parents force me to do this because there is a some kind of a balance I, we can't say that every parent is at fault right no, but no, yeah no, no. but but you know we need to understand th that is what i said as an indian parent as an indian parent we should understand the individual differences of our own child whether what is my child capabilities whether will my child is able to do engineering or you know this one their own aptitude interest and their ability all these things should be considered before we ask them to do anything right 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 yeah. and yeah. and it is it is very perplexing i wonder if everybody wants to become an engineer and doctor who will become who will become <laughs> ma'am your your voice is uh, not sir can you hear me now uh so okay fine anyways no, no. you have answered my question yes I'm yes i now. can hear you yeah yeah ma'am thank you i think there are other you know others have raised their hands probably i would answer few questions i think nanda have raised any questions nanda you are on yeah no sir thank you fine so anything else so like uh, i had yes. a question like uh, you Go were ahead. talking about like uh, indian indians in general do not look at individuals uh, like i i have read about it also like western uh, countries are more individualistic, individualistic. Indi yes. individualistic yes. Uh, in their approach and our societies are uh, like more look at a social aspect co collectivistic and we try to like Uh, look at each one as a piece of a bigger puzzle like we have to uh, fulfill a role uh, rather than like uh, being individualistic and uh, taking a path of our own so uh, like uh, but with the changing world a lot of ideas from west are also coming towards india and also a lot of studies are not done on societies uh, like india yes, as much as it's, studies it's, there it's have been done on do. western society we do we have to do a lot of research actually on indians right so for example to understand what makes people so for example because my neighbor did in engineering and getting some 10k 20 you know uh, uh, 10 lakhs 20 lakhs per annum because i want my child to be become an engineer because my extended family members someone related to you know like someone who been in mbbs because i wanted my child to become a doctor like you know sometimes people need to understand there are n number of careers you know in this world it's like you know if you allow the child to explore and also regulate their own emotions and you know uh, other things probably the child 
you know children do very well rather than forcing you know lot of influences are there yes okay ah yes uh sir uh bm i don't know what is your name sir uh as i told you earlier like you know i'm stopping with this topic so that's the reason i'm taking more questions and tomorrow i will be joining uh 9 to 11 for this social psychology class where i will handle you know continuous two hours just giving 10 minutes break in between all right so the classes are again uh, what we got the schedule is afternoon only two to four and four to six ma'am tomorrow no, tomorrow, I'm, I'm, tomorrow, I'm, tomorrow, I'm, tomorrow i'm tomorrow i'm i'm traveling that's the reason i requested not oh. afternoon so tomorrow please do join nine to eleven so we'll continue i'll finish the entire module like what are the topics tonight i'll prepare i'll finish entire module that is what uh, sir told me like another you know, first unit should be finished in two sessions which means four hours i'll take time and you know i'll we'll have a discussion and you know proper class sir, sir, can we do a little more today sir since we have time please sir <laughs> yeah we have time but uh, i had to prepare them this is not my area social psychology so i just don't want to just blabber you know if i speak i wanted to speak like you know with authenticity with proper answers right that is that's, that's how i do it so can right. we have the ppt please uh, will yeah ma'am uh, at yeah, the I'm end so of I... the every unit what do we get recording oh sorry i think ma'am yeah uh, ma'am uh, from my uh, my end the answer would be yes i will share but at the end of the each unit, probably I'll share with ma'am or, you know, sir, on, sir, probably you can get into touch or if you have a common group, like, you know, for this particular class, please do add me so I can, you know, add materials to that particular group. If you at all have it, otherwise I'll share the material with ma'am. So ma'am can share with you. Sure. Do we get recording, sir? That I do not know, ma'am. These are all administrative uh, issues. Probably you should ask them only. Right? Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, if if we want to uh, conduct a, a social study, like uh, yes, uh, regarding so uh, sh like uh, uh, on this subject, so how can we like uh, like? Define a, so there, a is a, there is a topic. Yeah. There is a topic how social psychology research would be done. Okay. Or any research would be done. I will cover like you know the ways to conduct the research studies. Definitely, you know, we'll cover after that. If anybody has you know uh, uh, any <coughs> more doubts, you can contact me or okay. you know throughout the class I will explain how the research would be done, right? On various topics. So no. So regarding that only, my question is like, we can actually can we try to like actually conduct a study while we are studying? Yes. 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 I think ma'am is here. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Sorry, uh, there was an another induction meeting. I just started. Yeah, 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 sir. Uh, we <laughs> have a foreign project. Yeah. Uh, oh. With African okay. students, that induction yeah. is there. I saw just you were uh, concluding, so I came back, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You know, uh, I thought of concluding because it's a short notice. I said, no, you know, sir, I do no, agree sir. because I don't no. want to continue without preparation. Right? Yes, sir. I, yes, sir. Tomorrow so you that can. That is continue what I'm telling my problem. students also. Yeah. I will yeah. join tomorrow nine o'clock, short nine o'clock. Please be there. We'll continue yes. for two hours tomorrow. Yes, sir. So in the morning. Yes, sir. Yeah, thank in the morning, you very sir. Much. Morning, nine o'clock. Uh, thanks, all the students, and please uh, uh, tomorrow also you join uh, by nine o'clock in the morning. Sir will be there, and you can uh, just continue with your queries and other uh, uh, okay, uh, doubts. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. Just, I just want to know a small concern. Do you think this four-hour session will be enough for us to learn, Madam? Madam, uh, see, in it is a audio system, open distance learning. 
and uh, uh, one credit is equal to the 120 hours of study most of the time you will be doing the self study madam these are the doubt clarifying sessions we will not conduct the classes like uh, how we conduct for the regular students these are all the doubt clarifying sessions that's what you will have to come prepared for the classes and the counselor and the professor who is there taking the classes will be clarifying the doubts madam so okay. it is a okay, four credit uh, so uh, ma'am ma ma for the four credit paper we can conduct minimum four classes if there any need be then we can continue with another two sessions that's all madam so, so ma whatever ma topic matter is I'm sorry. Yes, we not cover all the topics. Okay, only it is a doubt clarifying session. Come prepare for the classes. Yeah, Very minimum classes will be there according to the credit uh, devoted to that particular course, ma'am. Ma'am, for that matter only, I'm asking like if you can give us the topic. Okay, these are the topic you come prepared. We'll come yes, prepared yes. and ask the doubts. This is tomorrow. See, block wise, we have given in the schedule. It is block wise only. One okay. session, one block will be covered, ma'am. Okay. So okay. this you, is for the first block. And sir, as is, sir is. New. So uh, today, sir is concluding uh, in one hour, and then the second block, our sir will tell you uh, the next time you can tell sir. There are yes, four no, units no. or five no, units no. in you one block. You just go through the so block one and one block two material. Ma one session. Yeah, ma'am. Ma a small one second, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, I think everybody would have in the material. Yes, sir. So go through the block one and block two material. Right, and you know, come with the preparation and just go through it and you know, ask me any questions. I will also go through, come prepared for the black one and black two tomorrow. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you right. so yes, much. Yeah. Thank yes. you very much, sir. Uh, Thanks, sir. Uh, Tomorrow so, yes, I have one question. Uh, are we joining on the same link tomorrow morning? At yes, no, the link is already sent. Okay, Hold on. Thank the you. link is already sent. Please check the link. Okay. Sure. Uh, it could be a sir, different link, madam. You please check. Thank you, sir. Uh, I have a question. I have a question for you. I see uh, in the book block one. I have unit one, unit two, un unit three, unit four. So we have to study all unit two uh, until unit four. And in, 